questioned. The Piazza Armerina is an ancient Roman villa renowned for the beauty of its mosaics. This one of young girls in their bathing suits is famous the world over. A mosaic in one of the rooms in the villa depicts Polyphemus the Cyclop throwing boulders at Ulysses' ship to prevent him from escaping. The story continues off the port of Asitreza, where the Cyclops' boulders are said to have fallen. Polyphemus's bad aim is understandable because he was so far away, on Mount Etna in fact, where he was helping Hephaestus, the god of fire, forge the god's weapons in the underground furnace amidst the thundering of hammers, flying sparks and smoke. Mount Etna is the largest volcano in Europe. It measures an impressive 48 kilometers from north to south and 38 kilometers from east to west. Its volume is estimated at 600 cubic kilometers. Its massive shape is visible from anywhere in Sicily. The Sicilians also call it Mongibello, or the Mountain of Mountains. Indeed, Etna is first and foremost a mountain rising to 3,350 meters and covered with a thick layer of snow in winter and spring. Mongibello has always inspired fascination. In 490 BC, a philosopher from Agrigente by the name of Empedocles, feeling that he would never succeed in piercing the volcano's mysteries, threw himself into the crater's mouth in despair. Aeschylus, Plato, Aristotle all speak of Etna. In recorded history, the volcano's dormant phases have been rare. Etna is known to erupt an average of 15 times a century, an indication of the menace this mountain represents and explains why it is locally also known as the Viper. as the eruptions are frequent and powerful, it's surprising to find so many homes and farms on the slopes of the volcano. The reason is that the lava soil turned out to be extremely fertile, a godsend in Sicily where the soil is usually so arid. Already in ancient times, Strabo had noticed that the rich volcanic ash at the foot of the volcano very quickly became fruitful. The tubers grown in areas covered with ash put so much fat on the herds that they choke. From sea level to an altitude of 1,200 meters are terraced groves of orange and lemon trees and vineyards which give a wine that has a powerful taste with a touch of sulfur. The harvest is plentiful. Why heed the danger? 
If by some misfortune Edna awakens, the farmers will pray the patron saints, imploring them for a miracle such as one of the many that have marked the volcano's history. On February 5th, 2.53 a.m.